welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen, also known as Bull and Vine on Ravelry and pretty much everywhere else on the web. Uh, this is episode number 218, and if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you are a new viewer, thanks so much for checking out the podcast. Uh, this is a podcast about knitting, spinning, hand dyeing yarn, and making all the things in Brooklyn, New York, where I'm from, and I live with my husband, Dennis, and our adorable cat, Bella, who pretty much stole Vlogmas. <laughs> she was the star of Vlogmas, let's, let's just be honest. Uh, she she was a, was a show stealer, uh, but yes, Vlogmas is over, and I'm pretty sad about that. Uh, if, if you're not familiar, Vlogmas was uh, a thing that podcasters do or vloggers do, where you record a, a vlog every single day for the every single day of December leading up to Christmas, which is December 25th. And this was my very first Vlogmas and I had a lot of fun doing it. Granted, it was a challenge. I won't lie, it was a challenge uh, recording my day-to-day -day happenings and getting up in the morning and editing and getting it up on the web in a timely fashion. Uh, but I did have a lot of fun doing it and I just wanna say thank you so much to everybody who tuned in, uh, your lovely comments uh, and just warm holiday wishes and yeah, just keeping up with my festive shenanigans and being a part of my December. Uh, so, but yeah, fret not if you were really into Vlogmas, I will still be vlogging here and there, just not every day. I will be podcasting on a weekly basis as usual, uh, although during Vlogmas I was doing it on a more bi-weekly schedule. I think I only podcast maybe twice out of December, but it was a lot, there was a lot going on, so I'm sure you understand, but yes, we will be resuming our weekly podcast schedule and then peppering in the vlogs uh, as we go. And speaking of which, I will be vlogging for Vogue Knitting Live, which is happening. It's coming up in two weeks, which I cannot believe. Uh, Vogue Knitting Live 2017. Uh, Laura from uh, Jinx Yarns and The Dyer's Notebook will be visiting me. She's going to be staying with me and we will be going to Vogue Knitting Live together. It'll be so much fun. Um, and I just want to say, uh, I will not be having a podcaster meetup, uh, but if you do see us wandering around, please, please, please do come up and say hello. It would be so lovely to meet you. I, I give hugs. I, I will hug you. You're just gonna get hugged. But anyway, uh, I will try and have buttons. I'm not sure if it's gonna happen, but I will try to have some swag available. <laughs> so, uh, but yes, do come up and say hello. And what else did I wanna say? Ah uh, yes, show notes for this episode and every episode can be found at www yarngasmpodcast.com. Uh, if you would like to follow me on social media, I am most active on Instagram. I am at Vine there. And my hand dyed yarn can be found at www. Uh, and I will talk more about shop update stuff at the end of the episode in case you're not interested. So, and if you have not joined our Yarngasm Ravelry group, uh, please feel free to join. That's where you can participate in the chatter, the conversation, uh, partake in our knit alongs and enter to give away and enter to win giveaway prizes. Uh, just a really fun place to share your progress, talk about the podcast and the like. You know, it's just a really fun place to be. Uh, and yes, I will get into knit along news in a moment, but what else did I want to say? Um, Christmas, yes, uh, Christmas, Christmas hap- I cannot believe Christmas is over. Uh, Christmas was this past weekend. Uh, if you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. I hope you had a lovely holiday weekend. If you don't celebrate Christmas, uh, happy Hanukkah. I know today is the sixth day of Hanukkah, so happy sixth day of Hanukkah to those who celebrate. And if you don't celebrate anything or celebrate something completely different, I just hope you have are having a really lovely holiday season and enjoying the cooler weather, spending time with friends, family, and the like. So, but yes, this past weekend was Christmas. We spent Christmas Eve with my parents. But I am happy to report, just to give you guys, I will talk more about this at the end of the episode, but just to give you an update, I did get to see my grandmother on Christmas Eve on the way to our parents. Uh, granted, it was not, it, her uh, assisted living uh, home is not direct, uh, not directly uh, on the way to my parents, so we had to do like a little detour or whatever, but we did make it happen, and I just wanna say she loved, loved, loved her pebble beach shawl, uh, which was a shawl that I knit out of dragonfly fibers. Um, it, it, well, first the pebble beach shawl is a pattern, a lovely pattern by the lovely and amazing Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade Designs. And I knit it out of dragonfly fibers, one of their gradient sets, uh, which I purchased at Vogue Knitting Live this past January 
excuse me. And uh, yeah, it was just a really fun knit. And I knit it with my grandmother in mind because I know she loves green. I'll insert photos here, but she loved it. And she wore it the whole time we were there visiting after I gifted it to her. And yeah, it was just, I'm so happy that we got to see her because it has been quite some time since I've seen her last. I think maybe six months, which is really scary. But um, I am, we are planning to visit her again for her birthday because she's, I believe turning 83 uh, in January. Uh, so we will be visiting her again very soon. So yay. Uh, again, I'll talk more about this at the end of the episode, but yes, we do have, I do have lots to talk about with you guys today. Um, I have some knit along news to talk about and then I have some finished objects. I have some works in progress and then I'll get into a review. We have a review. It's been so long since I've reviewed anything on the podcast, but I do have one. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but yes, yeah, so let's get into the nitty gritty of the podcast. Uh, knit alongs that are currently underway. And again, if you are not interested in the knit alongs, knit along news and what have you, I will put a timestamp in the down bar so you can skip ahead and go right into uh, my finished objects. So, but without further ado, the box of socks knit along. Uh, that's winding down very quickly it's actually i will be closing the thread this weekend uh sunday january 1st 2017 and draw prize winners so if you have not uh entered your finished box of socks uh there is a thread in the yarngasm ravelry group for you to post your finished objects uh and just to be clear uh just make sure that it is very clear that you have a box for your socks and at least 12 pairs um you are more than welcome to post the socks in the box, the box with the socks next to the box, uh, or link to, uh, you know, the box, link to a project page with a photo of box and socks and what have you. Just make it clear that you have a box with at least 12 pairs of socks. That's all there is to it. Um, but yes, again, I will be closing that thread on January 1st, 2017, which is, I believe, yeah, this, this Sunday coming up. So, and again, the thread is beautiful, it's ever-growing, and it's wonderful. It's a wonderful place to be on Ravelry, so check it out. And if you are curious, I will be rebooting the Box of Socks Knit Along for 2017, so feel free to join in. I know a lot of people have um, mentioned that they just started knitting socks this year, so and they're excited to join in for 2017, so cannot wait. Um, so, yes. And the other knit along that we currently have going on is the Honey Cal, uh, with the Honey Pullover Cal, a pattern by Amy Miller, and I am co-hosting it with Nina from the This Old Knit podcast. So uh, that kicked off December 1st, and it's going all the way until March 1st, but we're going to see if people need a little bit more time. We may extend the deadline, but so far, uh, yeah, it's underway, and people are joining in and having a lot of fun with it. And it's not only the adult version, but if you would also like to knit the child's version, there is a child's version available as well, which you are more than welcome to knit that instead of the adult version. So uh, that is a lot of fun. I'm having fun with mine. I'll show you in <laughs> my works in progress in that segment. And then the next knit along that we have is uh, specifically for Volenbein Yarns, which is my hand-dyed yarn company. And that thread you can find over in the Volenvine Yarns thread. And that kicked off December 1st and is also going until March 1st. And the thing with that is uh, you can knit any shawl pattern, you desire any shawl wrap pattern you like out of my hand-dyed yarn, Volenvine Yarns. Uh, or if you do not have any of my yarn, you can use whatever yarn you do have or, you know, whatever yarn you want uh, and, knit a pat and knit my my pattern, Vildas Mir, which I'll try and insert a photo of it here. Um, just a loophole, because because some people had mentioned that they don't have my yarn, uh, so that is the loophole. Uh, feel free to cast that on and join in the knit along as well. Uh, so, yes, Whew. I am winded. Um, so I'm gonna take a sip of my tea. And my favorite mug, go away, I'm introverting. And in case you're curious, I am drinking David's tea in the coffee cake flavor, which so that's it for Cal speak. I'm gonna move along to finished objects because I do have two finished objects to share with you guys. And the first is for my box of socks. Uh, I just in time Christmas Eve, I got up early and finished my Christmas socks. You guys, I am so happy about these. 
I, I, I honestly, I will be honest, I didn't think it was gonna happen because there are so, I was going to knit some Christmas presents and then I just was like, you know what, I really just wanna finish my socks, so knitting what makes me happy and these were making me happy and I just, I finished them and the yarn is Jinx Yarns in her on her glitz base in her 2016 her new uh 2016 uh christmas colorway in the naughty or nice colorway uh and you can see the sparkles it's just so festive and fun and gothy and i wore these non-stop i <laughs> i think i wore them for three days straight it sounds gross but yeah i could not help myself i wore them christmas eve i wore them christmas day i wore them the next day and i finally washed them <laughs> so these are all washed and appropriately blocked because as soon as they were off the needles I put them on my feet um and yeah I, I just really really love the way these turned out uh granted I will say I like the way this sock turned out better because yeah I did have a little snafu here you can see um you see a little green from the previous color change previous stripe uh and then here oh and oh and then in the heel you see it's a little red right there so it doesn't bother me because I'm the one wearing them but if I could do it again I would be a little more conscious about <laughs> where I began and I don't know what have you but uh, and for the contrasting uh, cuff heels and toes I use Knit Picks Black I think it's called black or I'm, it might be called coal I'm not sure I lost the tag but it's Knit Picks Stroll and black and I will say I'm so, well, I enjoyed knitting with Lara's yarn. Knitting with the black was beginning to toy with my emotions <laughs> towards the end because it's black yarn. And if you don't have enough lighting, you cannot really see your stitch count, your stitches easily. So I really couldn't tell if I had to decrease here or not decrease at a certain point. And then the heel, I swear, I had to start and stop. I had to rip back and start the, so the the fish lips kiss heel about maybe three times before I got it right. Thankfully that only happened with one sock and for the second sock I made sure that I had enough lighting. But I took these to a knit night at Woolen. I believe they're, yeah, I, the, I think it was last Tuesday I went to Woolen and I knit on these and it just wasn't happening. It was the worst project I could have brought with me to a knit night uh, because I just messed up terribly and had to rip back the, the heel. But um, these are done and I think I'll just continue wearing them throughout the year because they make me happy and yeah, love these. Uh, I'm not, I don't think Lara will be dying this colorway or any of her other holiday colorways for the rest of the year. Again, don't quote me on it. Check her website. Um, she will have all the information there. Uh, but yeah, it might be until the next holiday season that she dies up this colorway again. Um, okay, so moving along to my next finished object. Uh, if you were watching Vlogmas, uh, you saw me actually finish these. And my Maplewood mitts, they're done. I love these so much. And these were such a quick knit. I think I probably could have finished a, a mitt in a day if I had enough time. But I finished these over the course of four days. So half a mitt in one day, the rest of the half the next day. I saved the thumbs till the very end, but they are done. I don't know if you can see that texture because this is, this is, uh, the yarn is uh, Kenzie by Hiku. There you go. And it's just such a fluffy, toasty, warm yarn. The only thing I will say is that this yarn is very hairy. <laughs> it does have a tendency, like if, I, if I'm outside, I've actually worn these outside and if I touch my face, the yarn, like little, these little, the halo, you can see the halo. It's just very, halo-esque so it does shed a little bit i will say that but they are super toasty warm and this is a pattern by so the maplewood mittens are a free pattern by rebecca blair and i could not recommend this pattern more the only thing i did differently was the cuff uh the cuff or the original pattern instructs you to knit a garter stitch cuff but i chose a twisted rib stitch uh one by one twisted rib uh just because i feel like it hugs my wrists more and will keep my hands warmer or wrists warmer you know what 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 have you so but if i can find the other i lost the label but this has i believe some yak in it i believe it has some silk and oil uh some angora and it's just a lot of luxury fibers in here and so so warm these are yeah 
I'm set for winter. I, I talked about on the vlog that I wish I had knit one of the thumbs. I can't even feel which one anymore. But um, one of the thumbs I had wished I added like an extra row or two or whatever. But now that they're blocked, they just fit like, they fit like a glove, you know? So very happy with these. I definitely was in the, I was definitely in need of some new mittens for the winter. I think the last pair of mittens I knit for myself were out of Malabrigo Worsted, which love that yarn, but it was definitely pilling. Uh, it was out of their Mariposa colorway, which is like a blue and yellow and green. I needed something neutral that could match all of my winter gear and <laughs> my winter wear. That is it for finished objects this week. I feel like I got so much done. I, I took a knitcation last week. I didn't do any work. I didn't do any dyeing. I uh, didn't have a shop update, but I feel like I got a lot of knitting done, which is always awesome. So, you know, even, even though there are small projects, I, you know, it's always, it feels good when you get a lot done. Um, but I do have some stuff on the needles. Uh, this one has been on my needles for quite some time and I really want to finish it because I love, 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 love the way it's knitting up. Uh, it's just very involved. I have to pay attention to it a lot. It requires a lot of focus and attention. Uh, but this is the Trekkia. I, I only put like a row or two in since I last showed this to you, which is sad, but um, it will be finished <laughs> soonly, I promise you. Uh, just because I want, you know, holiday knitting, what have you. Anyway, uh, but this is, this is the Trekkia hat by Michelle Wong. And the yarn is Road to, uh, the yarn company is Road to China. And it's just such a lovely, lovely yarn. I cannot tell you how luxurious this yarn feels. It is, it feels like mink. It feels like, like buttered kittens. Uh, it, it's beautiful. So, <laughs> this is the label. And I purchased this at Brooklyn General a while ago, uh, and the fiber content is, uh, it's sport weight, and then it's 65% alpaca, 15% silk, 10% camel, and of course 10% cashmere. So very luxurious, an incredibly luxurious base. And I will say the price point, $16 for, and you get 145 meters, 159 yards. So I will say, you know, this of course requires two, I'm already on the second skein of it, but for the price point, you can't go wrong. I think it's just, yeah. All I can say is this is gonna keep me super warm during the winter uh, and it will match with all my all my winter stuff again. So yay, I'm very excited about that. Um, but yes, uh, hopefully by the next time I record, it will be done. <laughs> that, that will be my goal. Uh, but yes, that is one thing that I have currently on the needles. Uh, the other thing that I have going is uh, my honey pullover. Is it in here? I don't think. No, I'll show this to you in a second. But um, my honey pullover, which I is a part of my knit along that I'm co-hosting with uh, Nina from the This Old Knit podcast. Um, I cast on using my hand dyed yarn, Volan Vine yarns. Uh oh, they drop stitches. This is out of my hand dyed yarn, Volan Vine yarns, in on my Volca base, which is a merino nylon cashmere superwash. Uh, in the Main color is Tega, and then the contrasting colorway is Dirty on Purpose. And again, uh, the Honey Pullover is a top-down raglan sweater with tiny little pockets at the bottom, which adds a really nice detail. You can't really, obviously, put too much in them, but they, you know, you can't put your hands in them, but, um, you know, you can store little things like notions or, you know, coins, what have you. Anyway, it's a really, really adorable detail. Um, but I think eventually soon I'm going to have to move these, move all these stitches over to a longer cable. Sorry, my nose is super itchy right now because of that yard. Ah. Um, anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, here's where I am. So a couple more rows to go on the raglan increases and then yeah, I get to separate the sleeves. So honestly, it's just like knitting a giant body sock. It's just round and round and round every other row increase, you know, at the armholes and just a really lovely relaxing pattern. Um, you know, if you don't have a sock on the go, knit a honey pullover. <laughs> and I'm currently using my Haya Haya Sharps interchangeables uh, in the US size uh, four and five millimeter needles. And here you go. And so far I've had these for about three weeks now and I love them. Not going back to anything else, guys. This 
is my chosen tool of choice these days. Next up, I should talk about my Christmas Eve cast on because yes, there was a Christmas Eve cast on. Um, because obviously once you finish knitting one pair of socks, you have to cast on another and Talk about perfect timing for Little Bobbins Christmas Eve cast on, uh, which by the way, if you're not familiar, Little Bobbins is a really lovely podcast hosted by Danny uh, and her, her adorable puppy Bobbin. Uh, and yeah, she started this really amazing tradition of, a genius tradition of having a Christmas Eve cast on. And yeah, it just, it's just taken the interwebs, the knitter community by storm and every, every Christmas Eve, knitters just, come together and cast on something mainly socks but you can i think you can pretty much cast on whatever you want at this point but anyway um my christmas eve cast on was a skein of cat sandwich fibers and her vi let's play video games colorway and mj who is the dyer behind cat sandwich fibers so generously gifted this skein to me at my trunk show at do you knit this uh past november i think it was yeah and it's just been staring at me and I was like this ha and it does kind of remind me of Christmas a little bit just kind of like Christmas lights it just had to happen I was like I'm I'm casting on I'm, 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 I'm casting these on Christmas Eve so this happened and granted I only made it towards the cuff uh I was going to cast on a bunch of I had a, a couple of other ideas that I wanted to cast on but honestly I only had the attention span for a sock Christmas Eve so this is what happened and I only knit the cuff and since then I've knit a heel and part of the toe and this progress keeper right here was a lovely gift from Shauna of Adelaide Cottage we did a little swap and this just makes me so happy it's it's a pegasus unicorn a pegacorn and it's just been hanging out on this project I love it I love it I love it I love it thank you Shauna thank you MJ this is this is just made my knitting Christmas so much more special. Um, my Christmas knitting so much more special. Um, and yeah, I'm knitting some Chia Goose uh, in US size 1.5, 2.5 millimeter needles. And yeah, so really, really loving the way it's knitting up. It's so festive and here's her label. So cute. So, and yeah, this is her trusty sock base, which I love. And again, if you had been following me on Vlogmas, you know that I was tossing around the idea of casting on a Find Your Fade shawl, and I could not make a decision, and I was like, you know what? I feel like every single day I was like coming up with new combinations. Do I do this one? Do I do that one? And I just kind of tossed the idea to the wayside. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to worry about it now. There are other things that I want to cast on, other things that I want to work on. And then yes, the day before yesterday, I, I had this trio of colorways that have been staring me in the face. It was um, a skein, two skeins of skinny dipping yarn and then one skein of um, hedgehog fibers that I've just been ogling and I was going to, I had one pattern in mind for it and I was going to cast it on. I did cast it on, but then I saw Jenny from, uh, well, she's Tiny Paper Foxes on Instagram, but she's from the Handmade in Woolen podcast. She posted on Instagram uh, her Find Your Fade shawl, and she had me at that. I'm like, you know what? Screw everything else. I'm just going to cast it on and find my fade as I go. So I took those three colorways that I had in mind and just cast on with Reckless Abandon, and here we are. <laughs> here we are today. Um, I cast it on, I worked on it yesterday and I haven't worked on it today yet, but here's where I am. Uh, and as I mentioned, this is skinny dipping yarn, yarns in her merino singles in her space pants colorway. And I don't know if you can see this, but this color is everything. It literally looks like space leggings or pants, whatever you want to call it. It just has all those colors that you see in like leggings like that. Um, and then I'm fading it into Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles in her their Hush colorway. And I'm just having a blast knitting it. So yeah, and again, as I mentioned, I'm just going to find my fade as I go. I don't have a clear palette in mind. Uh, I do have another skein, which I will show you right now. So I think this purple one is going to fade into this blue one, which is also skinny dipping, uh, and it is Merino Single um, in her blue raspberry slurpy colorway. She has the best names, guys. So that's going to fade into that. And then 
I don't know. I will find filler as I go, either from my stash. Uh, I, although I did order, I did treat myself to some more Hedgehog Fibers uh, yarn. So that is coming in the mail. It should be here Saturday that I will be using as filler for this. Just seeing what works, what doesn't work. So I will have that to show you next week. But yeah, loving this pattern. It is super addictive. <laughs> I will say that while I was knitting it, Dennis, you know, was asking me what I'm knitting, working on. And if you can imagine, <laughs> during the early stages of this pattern, I think it was about maybe here, I told him I was, I was knitting a thong <laughs> because it really does look, it looks like a thong, guys. Um, so, but you know, thankfully he didn't believe me. But anyway, it would have been fun if he did though. Uh, but yeah, I, I, you know, had a chuckle with that. But anyway, it's living in my, my scully bag right now. I, again, like I just, I don't have one particular bag for a particular project generally. I just grab whatever's empty, whatever's free and whatever fits. So this is what's in here right now. <laughs> so that, there's that. Um, and the other project, do I wanna, yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last but not least, this, if you follow me on Instagram, you know what I'm gonna pull out right now. In my, it's not really full right now, but it will be eventually. Um, I cast on, I, I resisted this so much, you guys. I tried with all my might not to cast one on. I was like, I have enough blankets on the go. I don't like crochet, whatever, it's not my thing. But so many people were casting this on that I, I, I could not resist anymore. And I think I went through a moment of craziness and just cast it on because I was, I felt like it was one of those nights when I, where I was kind of in a knitting slump. I didn't really know, you know, what I wanted to work on or I cast something on and then it was like, eh. So it was one of those moments of craziness, you know, again, reckless abandon. Uh, so yeah, yep, yep. Crochet hook and the granny stripe blanket begins. It's happening, it's happening. And I cast this on, you know, last night, cast it on last night. Uh, it is the size of a queen size bed. I, again, I cast this, I will say I cast it on two nights ago and I know the pattern, it, it's a pattern from addict24.com. I will link to it in the show notes, but the pattern says to cast on around like 300 semi out stitches. And I, as I was chaining, like chaining and counting about 300, chains or whatever, I lost count, totally lost count. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I, there's no way, there's no way I'm going back and counting all these chains because, oh my gosh, I wanna rip my hair out right now. Uh, so I just threw it aside. And then I watched Jacqueline from the Brooklyn Knit Folks podcast. And she had mentioned that, you know, talked about her whole process of casting on this pattern. And she goes, you know, I didn't, I really didn't keep count. I just kind of chained and then measured it up to my bed and see, you know, just to see how long to make it. And then went from there. And I was like, all right, yeah, she can do it. I can do it. So I gave it another go and yeah, I made it happen. So thank you, Jacqueline, for giving me the <laughs> inspiration, kicking the butt I needed to actually just go with it. And yeah, it's going to be a blanket that goes over our bed or throw or I don't know um, maybe just something for our new sofa what have you but anyway uh, having fun working on it I guess yeah it is very addicting I will say I, I, I may have been kind of dreaming about it last night like I could just put one more row in there with just one more row um, but I will say that yes the the initial chaining and then getting the foundation rows started wasn't a picnic, uh, but I did persevere. Uh, it wasn't as horrible as I thought it was going to be. I just kept my chains relatively loose uh, and then had, you know, binge watched maybe two episodes of Penny Dreadful last night and then just got it going. And lo and behold, we have, we have, a, we have a crochet granny stripe blanket going. So yay, highly recommend it if you are looking for a blanket to cast on and use scrap yarn. Um, but right now, I started with uh, a foundation row and two rows of crochet using O-Wool in their Barn Owl colorway. It's their O-Wash base. I don't know if you can see that, but... There we go. And then, yeah, I'm using Hedgehog Fibers. Uh, and then I'm using Hedgehog Fibers in Birthday Cake. So leftover yarn from a pair of socks that I knit. 
Uh, so, but yeah, and then the next color is going to be this one, which is Skein Yarn in Moroccan Mint. So yeah, we'll see where it goes. So far I'm having fun, so, and it's addicting, which is a good sign. So we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. So moving along, uh, no yarn acquisitions this week, but uh, I do have something that came in the mail on Christmas Eve, just in time. Perfect Christmas present to myself. Um, you guys, rib! And this is a magazine put out by Eric of the Six Plus Twine podcast and Jenny and Devin of the Handmade and Woolen podcast. And I just want to say congrats, guys. This is amazing. What you did and what you've made and put together is just phenomenal. And like just having, like knowing the, like the work, like the people and the work that they put into it, it's just, it makes it that much more special. And, and Mina Phillips, she has a pattern in here as well, uh, two patterns, and she has the Metropolitan Hat and Cowl. Um, but this was just so fun to get in the mail on Christmas Eve. Uh, and just flip through it on the car right up to visit my grandmother's and here's another cowl um, Again, I haven't really had time to spend time like, you know reading through everything but just flipping through it has just been so wonderful and just all the photos and all the photos were taken by Devin uh, and Definitely a talented photographer and it's yeah. Yeah, it's there are no words and it has that new magazine smell which I love so much and it's quality, super solid and just so worthwhile. If, if you're on the fence about whether or not you should subscribe to this magazine or get a copy for yourself, just, just do it. Uh, and the whole theme behind, if you're not familiar, Rib, is a magazine for men who knit and those who knit for men, uh, which is brilliant. There aren't any, as I think this is the first magazine dedicated to men's knitwear, which is brilliant. So the best idea ever and I love it. And I think my, you know, one of my favorite parts about it is at the end of every magazine or every issue, there's going to be a cocktail recipe. So the first one is the Negroni. And you can see that there. Yeah. Dennis had actually ordered a Negroni on uh, Christmas. We had went to, we went to dinner in a movie, which I'll talk about more in Blather, but he did order a Negroni, one of his favorite cocktails. And it's just, yeah, a visual treat, you guys. It's a visual treat. So... Yeah, anyway, definitely check it out. I think I will talk more about this on the next ish, on the next episode when I've had time to fully digest it, but it's just such a well-made magazine. And, and, and you guys, it's Chelsea and her husband, Chelsea from the Legacy Knits podcast. It's, yeah, it's just friends put, coming together and making something really awesome. So anyway, I've waxed poetic enough about this. Definitely check it out. It's worthwhile, um, especially if you knit for men or you are a man who knits. So check it out. Full disclosure, Stitchcraft Marketing reached out to me and wanted to know if I would like to review uh, a skein of Yoon Cashmere in their Kyrgyz Cashmere yarn. So here we go. This was sent to me and I will be reviewing this on the next episode, but this came in the mail and it's 100% cashmere and it's oh so lovely. And oh my gosh, you guys, it's 100% Kyrgyz cashmere lace weight in their holiday colorway, Jingle, I think it's called Jingle Balls? I forget what it's called. Silver Bell, I'm sorry. They put it on the label. Silver Bells, you get 308 yards per skein. And I had, a, like I wanted to join in on Eric's pie, shawl along, but I don't think, there's definitely not enough yardage in here. There's only 308 yards, so this isn't gonna happen. It's gonna be, have to be something else, but I cannot wait to knit with this. Um, it's just so luxurious, so soft, and anyway. You'll hear more about this throughout, uh, you know, in the, in the podcasts to come, but definitely I will post a link to their website in the show notes if you're curious and anyone to go check it out, but um, stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, uh, I have a review to talk about. Uh, before I get into sewing, so let's get to that. Uh, so Stranded Magazine had reached out to me and wanted to know if I wanted to review their cold weather issue for 2016, and of course I said yes. And oh my gosh, you guys, this is such a, f I've heard of Stranded Magazine before, but never really looked into it, but having, they sent me a digital copy of it and it is such an awesome magazine. It's modern, it's fresh, it's 
very innovative and it was just such a pleasure to just rifle through and check out the photos and everything and even the articles i mean it's very simple it's very straightforward uh they have seven patterns that you can knit from it and each issue has a theme and this time it was all natural undyed fibers but i love the way that they display all of their images uh, they add personality and give life to otherwise not boring but just you know natural undyed fibers so what they did was to do that they they stylized all their photos with neons and bright bold colors to make to make it pop if you will and that's one of my favorite things like my favorite colorway combinations is like a bright even though i'm not into neons very much what i do love are neons that are paired with neutrals because it really tones it down and makes it wearable without you know making it over the top if you will so i really enjoyed their aesthetic when it came to photographing all of their all of the knitwear that they had to show for in the pattern in the in the magazine in the issue and several of my favorite it was hard to pick just a few i feel like i wanted to knit about maybe 90 90 percent of all the patterns that were in this issue and that's that's saying a lot so um i really like that they had recipes uh I, again like rib magazine every issue i feel like they do a recipe uh this one they had uh, homemade ginger syrup which is really fun uh and then they also do a sewing project they had a drawstring project bag um but uh, my fa some of my favorite patterns were the Tanzina, uh, I'll post photos up here so you can see what I'm talking about, but uh, the Tanzina socks by Erin Birnell, uh, the Skyward pullover, which is the cover uh, pullover. It's just like this giant, chunky, cozy hug. <laughs> my all-time favorite one is the Warlow Wrap uh, by Caitlin French, who's one of my favorites. I've never knit one of her patterns before, but I love her aesthetic. It's very, very kind of goth and wiccan, if you will. So she's, I love following her on Instagram. She just has some of the best photos on there, but, uh, and her patterns are absolutely beautiful. So I cannot wait to knit one of them. Uh, I have one pie shawl that was actually gifted to me that I would love to knit ASAP. Uh, I'm just waiting for the right yarn to find me. But uh, this is a really beautiful, I could totally see myself, myself knitting this. Uh, the Warlow, it's called, the, the, it's called Warlow, um, but definitely check it out. Black Home, which I know KT from Inside Number 23 also reviewed this magazine or this uh, issue. And I believe this is her favorite one because it has one of her favorite designers in it. But Andy Sutherland uh, designed it and it's absolutely beautiful. It's so, it has definitely has a vintage feel to it. It's has like a ski scene on it and it's really adorable. Uh, definitely check that one out. And then, oh my gosh, you guys, there's a muff. There's a muff pattern. And if you know me, I am like a hardcore Victorian <laughs> fangirl. I, I love anything Victorian and yeah. the Nebesna muff which was designed by Noriko Ho who is actually the model for the, all of the uh, the knitwear designs in the, in the issue. Um, it's a muff pattern. Come on. I want to knit this so badly. Um, she also designed the McClure hat which is so like ski loft and lodgy. It's oh, oh my gosh. It was one of my favorite patterns as well. So yeah. definitely check out the latest issue of Stranded Magazine, their cold weather issue, I believe it's called. Let me see. The cold, yeah, the cold weather issue 2016. Lots and lots of fun stuff to be had there and wonderful patterns as well. Moving along to sewing, uh, I am actually wearing my latest sewing project. And if you were following Vlogmas, uh, you actually got to see a little behind the scenes of me making this. Uh, and yes, if you are guessing, Kristen, is that another Anna dress? Yes, my friends, it is. This has to be my sixth Anna dress that I've made and possibly my favorite version of this dress because I did everything correctly. It all worked out and everything was sewn the way it should have been sewn. So I will do a little stand-up dancer for you guys, but yeah. Here it is, fits like a glove. Um, and I used, again, like some dandelion fabric. It's quilting cotton, um, which is not my favorite favorite but I love the print and it fits uh, but yeah it comes down to my knee and I Franken pieced it with a I believe McCall's pattern so just a straight a-line skirt and yeah here's the back I'll do a little twirl yay okay so uh the one thing that I actually want to put a question out to you experienced sewist out there uh when you do work with quilting cotton quilting cotton in specific you know how when the the fabric comes to you it's folded over uh and you cut on the fold and if you see here 
don't know if you can see. You're probably not gonna be able to see it, but there's a fold line, and I've pre-washed it. I've pre-washed the fabric and everything, but this fold line is still there no matter how many times I iron over it. I wonder if there's a remedy for that. Do any of you know how to get rid of that fold line because it feels like it's there for good. I don't know how, what to do about it, but it's there. So if you have any suggestions, any tips, please leave them in the Yarngasm Ravelry thread for this episode. <laughs> I would love to hear from you. Um, so yeah, I'm very pleased with this dress. Uh, I have, I sadly did not meet my goal of making my holiday dress out of my seafoam fabric, <sighs> but I can always make that throughout the year. So there's, there's plenty of time. And that's pretty much it for sewing. I don't have any other sewing plans in mind right now. I'm just kind of toying with some ideas, but I will let you know what my next plans are. Maybe the next episode. So anyway, that's it. That's all I have for you for sewing. I am gonna move along to shop update, I believe. Yes, I'm gonna move along to shop update because I am having an international friendly shop update, which coincidentally falls on New Year's Eve. So Saturday, January, th uh, no, I'm sorry. Saturday, uh, December 31st at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, I will be having a shop update. Uh, granted, it's going to be small, uh, but I will be having mainly free swim colorways, which are colorways that may or may not become regulars. They're just one-offs, uh, one-of-a-kind colorways that, you know, I just feel like having fun in the dye pot, creating, playing, and mixing, and experimenting with new dyes and colorways and yeah just basically fun fun free swim for me so uh I, I did die i did have a lot of fun in the dye pot this week and i hope you guys are going to enjoy these colorways because i do and there are quite a lot to show you so i will just be getting a couple of my favorites and one regular colorway will be coming out of this um i will be dyeing some more regulars today and tomorrow but yes let me go get them so i can show you on the podcast so these are some of my favorites to come out of the dye pot this week. Uh, I haven't, granted, I have not named any of these yet. So <laughs> just keep in mind that I do post a list of all the colorways and the names and everything that's going to be in the shop update prior to the update. So keep an eye out on volanvineyarns.com uh, for, you know, at the, on the blog on the blog section and, you know, just to get an idea of what will be in the shop. So, but here's one that I came up with. This one, and this is on my Volca base, Merino Nylon Cashmere. And then I am testing out or auditioning uh, two new bases this week, uh, and one I'm head over heels for. This is my new Hour and Wait, which I'm calling Cocoon. And this is the new colorway that I came up with that will be a, reg a new regular. Again, I haven't named it yet, but I am so in love with this colorway, you have no idea. It's definitely a happy accident and yeah, I will keep you posted on what I, I name it, but it's a 100% superwash BFL blue face luster uh, yarn two ply. So really, really squishy, really sturdy, very warm, and love it, love it, love it. So yay! Um, and then here's another one, one of a kind. It's free swim. Uh, I think I'm gonna call this one actually um, Carpe Diem. I don't know why. It just looks like it wants to be called Carpe Diem. There's that, also in Cocoon. Uh, and then this one was total happy accident. No idea what I'm gonna be calling this one. Will not be repeated at all, but I just love, I didn't write the recipe down at all either. But here's where. So this will be, all these are dyed across uh, a couple bases as well. There's this one. Um, and then there's this one, another uh, base that I am testing out, still TBD but it's a uh, superwash mohair, merino, and nylon. So definitely a very sturdy sock base. And if you can see, it has a really lovely halo. So very luxurious, very sturdy, very warm, and yes, so loving it, yay. So that is, again, I have so many like one of a kind free swim colorways. It's just a lot to show you guys. So those are, are my top favorites right now. But again, keep an eye on woolenvineyarns.com, the blog space, and to keep, you know, I, I will list a, a bunch of colorway names and everything. And of course I will post some photos on Instagram uh, just to give you an idea of what will be in store. And yeah, otherwise that is it. Uh, January, I'm sorry, why do I want to say January? 
sorry, December 31st, Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I uh, hope you can make it. And yes, that will be obviously the last update of the year since it is on the last day of the year. And yeah, so otherwise I'm gonna move along to Blather where I talk about what's been going on in my life. Uh, should you be so inclined to stick around? But uh, yeah, it's Christmas happened this past weekend. And as I mentioned, we visited my grandmother, we visited my parents, uh, we got to see their new cat. <laughs> and they did, they have two cats now. Uh, they have a parrot and I believe it's a Myers parrot that they have. Yeah, really sweet. They have another cat, uh, Moshu Shu, which they've uh, had for quite some time now, I think like three years. And they just adopted another kitten uh, named Mia. And she's super adorable, super friendly. Uh, we had a lot of fun playing with her. If you wanna see what she looks like, she was, check out the Christmas Eve Vlogmas episode. Uh, yeah, she was just really, so lovable. And it was really nice getting to hang out with her. Um, but in other awesome news, my mom, she got a sewing machine, totally unexpected, would not think, last person on earth I would think would get a sewing machine, but I, she's expressed interest in quilting now, so I was like, oh my gosh. So she told me Christmas Eve that she bought a sewing machine, found it at, I don't know, Kmart or something for $50, and I made her take it out, she brought it out, and without even asking, I just tore open the box, set it up for her and just gave her like a crash course in how to sew. But it just, I got, I was so excited for her. So I hope it goes over well. I'm just gonna be helping her, like sending her tutorials and everything. And hopefully it'll, you know, she'll take off with it or whatever. But you know, I'm so glad that I actually got it out of the box for her because I feel like it would have just sat in the box and she wouldn't have known where to begin what at anywhere so yeah she was very excited for me to do that for her and i you know again did a little you know my dad gave me a t-shirt or a, you know an old t-shirt to practice on and yeah i just showed her I, I took it through its paces the machine's paces and showed her what was what and she bought she, i believe it's a bro she purchased a brother so it was my first time using a brother ever but I quickly got the, the swing of it. Like I knew where things went without having to look at a manual. So it was, it was easy for me to just, just set up and show her how things worked. I think it was maybe like a half an hour crash course that I gave her, impromptu if you will. She didn't even realize she was getting a crash course. I was just like, this is what you do. This is how everything goes. So I think she really enjoyed it. So we'll see, I will keep you posted on um, where that goes. But uh, yeah, so that was Christmas Eve. Christmas Day, Dennis and I just relaxed. We took the day slow. Obviously, I got my, I decided to spend the day sewing. I made a dress, yay! <laughs> and uh, then we went out to dinner. We went to this really wonderful Italian place that we've been trying to get a reservation for, reservation at for quite a long time. We got in, and then we went to see Rogue One. Uh, and yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, we kind of, you know, we realized we were spending way too much time at the restaurant and quickly got our check and made it over to the theater. And yeah, it was just a really nice, relaxing Christmas day. I, that's all I can really say about it. Um, and yeah, I got to see family and I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, Dennis had the day off the next day. So I really didn't get much work done, but I did want to play around with my new yarn bases. So I did dye up several skeins that day, surprisingly. Uh, but then otherwise the week, yeah, it's just been a pretty chill week getting some work done, mainly just ordering a lot of admin stuff, ordering in new supplies and the like. And yeah, this <laughs> I don't think what else, but that's about it. Um, honestly, uh, this weekend is New Year's Eve, uh, New Year's Day. Dennis and I maybe will go out for dinner and I don't know, just hang out at home, ring in the new year on telly. Because honestly, I've had it with 2016. I know many people have had it with 2016, but despite all the bad news that we've been hearing on the news and what have you, I just want to say personally for me, I've been lucky to have a good year personally. Uh, I just feel like I've been surrounding myself with the most wonderful people, uh, knitters and creative people alike. And yeah, it's, I feel like I'm not gonna say this as eloquently as many other podcasters have said it, but I just feel so lucky to have a community of wonderful knitters like you, knitters and makers. Uh, I just wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for tuning in to my podcast, for subscribing, for just, 
partaking in the conversation that we have on Ravelry, online, in person. Uh, I, I get emails like this and comments all, like this all the time. People who say, I wish I could knit as good as you. I wish I could, you know, sew as well as you do. Just stick with it. Have confidence in yourself. Practice, practice, practice. Don't be hard on yourself at all. Everyone learns at different speeds, times, you know, you may not have as much time as the next person does, but just stick with it. If you love it, do it. Uh, if you haven't tried it yet, just, just go for it and go get it, you know? <laughs> so anyway, I'm totally rambling right now, like I always do and always say, but looking forward to a happy, healthy, better new year, 2017. Let's make it happen, people. <laughs> so anyway. Happy New Year, and I will see you next time. Ba -da -da -ba -da.